Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. So I want to talk a little bit about this upcoming gathering. So today's January, Tuesday, January 30th, 2004, and in two days, on the 1st of February, the 2nd and 3rd of February, we will be doing a gathering celebrating the birth anniversary of the first master of the Sajmark system. But this video is um, going to be for any gathering that takes place. I'll put this in a a separate playlist and this can be the introductory video and so I'm going to just describe the process of meditation what happens and the idea of having these six group meditations so if you've watched the other introductory videos on this channel the overall introductory video the introductory to the various playlists every playlist has an introductory video and and maybe there might be a few other videos that explain things right and so some of this is going to be repetitive but it's good to hear it over and over again because you might forget and so this video is going to describe what you do at a gathering but also in terms of the practice of Saj Marg and what we're calling gratefulness meditation and so when you meditate here you're meditating on the supposition of divine light, the second master of the system gave this as the object of meditation. Now the object of meditation is ultimately God. The supposition of divine light is giving you something maybe more uh, substantial to focus on, but you're having this idea that there's divine light in your heart. You're supposing it is. It's not something concrete. It's not something forceful. You're not even sure if it's there. It's a supposition, right? It's almost like a theory. I believe there's divine light in my heart and I'm looking for it. And so you're, you know, going on almost a search and, and looking for divine light. But looking isn't the correct term because your eyes are closed and you're not using your eyes. You're supposing there's divine light and you are focusing on it in a very gentle way. And you're going to have other thoughts because that's natural. And those thoughts you're supposed to treat like uninvited guests or barking dogs where you don't attend to them, right? You don't think about those thoughts. Like once you have the thought, you don't dive into the thought. You don't then think other thoughts related to that original thought, right? So let's say you're like worried about one of your kids or you're, you know, something's going on at work that's pissing you off or something. The thought comes into your your mind and you just let it go. You don't have you don't dwell on it right and you go back to the idea that there's divine light in the, your heart but ultimately what you want to do is feel the divine light in your heart right it's a feeling exercise you're feeling god's love ultimately you want to feel the experience that you're having is a feeling one you're feeling the love in your heart and this process is going to evolve over time the difference between the sajmar gratefulness meditation and other meditative practices is that there is a cleaning process that cleans away everything that isn't divine light and there is a transmission that's given that helps people feel the divinity within them and the transmission that's given is pure God's love. The practice of meditation is something that people do all the time because it's a natural human I want to say coping mechanism or something that people do. Meditation is a part of how your brain and your internal system works right you get into a meditative state maybe listening to music or you can get into a meditative state by when, when you're walking or when you're on a trip and you're in a car you're looking out the window or plane trip or you're bored you're sitting in an office somewhere and you're going inside and internally focusing on something you're just killing time right you know daydreaming is like a form of meditation these things it's a it's where your brain waves and your and your internal system focus on something in a very light non-forceful way and you have an object of your meditation to have a meditation there must be an object there must be something that you're focused on something that you're thinking about and so all meditative practices aren't the same because the object of the meditation is important if you're meditating on financial success like there's people who meditate on you know accomplishing something on on athletic achievement. So there's things that people meditate on to gain those things, right? Because the idea is that anything you meditate on, you manifest and you pull towards you. Somebody who loves somebody else meditates on their on their lover, right? Their spouse and thinks about them. These types of things. So the object of meditation is important. 
because whatever you're going to meditate on, you're going to receive. So in Saj Marg, the meditation of divine light, the supposition of divine light, is just the object that's a placeholder so that you can feel God's love. Ultimately, you're meditating on the feeling of God's love. And so you're going to sit comfortably in terms of this upcoming gathering or any of these group meditations, and there's going to be a transmission that's given, either by the master of the system or preceptors or just directly getting it from the source. But the process on your end is always the same. You meditate, you know, it's going to be around 45 minutes to an hour. You do your best. I mean, it might be harder at first to do it. But the longer you do it, the better it gets. The transmission is given at the end of the meditation. And so the cleaning process is the idea of these impressions and scars being cleaned away. And these are things that block your connection to God within you the divinity within you, things that you've accumulated over time that are uh, spiritual grossness, that are some things that are, you know, impressions that you have. Like when you close your eyes at night and there was an annoying song you heard in a movie and you can't stop thinking about it. And it just keeps on playing over and over like some kind of a, you know, on a loop. And, or, you, you know, you were watching something and you went to bed and you didn't get some kind of resolution on it the TV or something's happening in your life there's something unresolved at work and or in a relationship something that's upsetting to you and you go down you go get ready to, to go to sleep and all you can do is think about these things this thing that's you're going through right and these are called some scars impressions that you have that you know you might not sleep because you're thinking about something for hours right you're dwelling on it and the more you think about it the stronger it gets you're enhancing it with your thought force and your fear and your emotions you're having are making the thing worse than it actually is right and so in the sajmark practice of gratefulness meditation that we're doing the idea is that you're you know, have the supposition of divine light transmission is given and your inner condition is read and then a cleaning process is activated and it might create some restlessness it might you might have some of these thoughts are being cleaned out some of the things that are going on in your life and you just allow them to pass through you you know, the idea that these things are being cleaned away from you as you meditate and you're focusing on your heart and feeling God's love. And after a, a substantial amount of cleaning is done, a transmission is given. The idea is that you have to make room in your internal system. And so things are cleaned away and transmission is given to fill those empty areas, you know, the, you know, whatever's inside of you now. And so in a six part series where there's six group meditations given, there'll be a lot more cleaning in the beginning sittings and a lot more transmission in the end sittings. And ultimately, by the end of the gathering, there should be an improvement in your spiritual condition where you feel substantially lighter and also filled with God's love. And you're, and it's easier to meditate. It's easier to, to go inside. And these gatherings, the, the transmission and the energy that's there is more, you know, is just more potent. It's more powerful in terms of its effects. It's an easier time to meditate. And in terms of spiritual evolution, it helps people move forward faster and more substantially. And so during these gatherings, that's what's taking place. And just, you know, meditate sometime in the morning and sometime in the evening or at night or whatever, twice a day for three days. And it's the same process in the group meditations. Now there's playlists here. So this is um, the, the Gratefulness Meditation Apocalypse, now this channel here that you're seeing this video. And there's a video, there's a playlist for gratefulness gatherings. And I'm not sure what it says, but it might say something similar. And I'm going to put this video also in there. So if you want to know what to do at a gratefulness gathering, I think this one has to do with um, the video that's on there. It has to do with gatherings in the future for gratefulness meditation but i'll put this video in there and i'll put it on top it'll be the first video and it just describes what you would do in terms of meditating at one of these gatherings the video that's already in there is about us having gatherings you know gathering somewhere as people and how we're kind of far away from doing something like that but then there's this you know three individual sittings on one day um the introductory sittings, that's three sittings, individual sittings over a three-day period. And there's a difference here between individual sittings and group meditation. And what you're doing at a gathering is group meditation.
But then there was um, the individual sittings playlist. And again, this has seven videos. There's two sittings on here. And there's five explanation videos. And so watching all these explanation videos is important to understand the practice. But this was the first playlist I put together. And you see um, explanation of gratefulness, individual, and group meditation videos. There's already these explanation videos there. And then there's a individual sitting that you can do here. And it's just timed out for you. But you're not getting an individual sitting. This was before I started working as a preceptor. This is a gratefulness group meditation video. And what it is is um, it's... Um, Okay, so I'm editing. I want to do a better explanation here. So this is the first playlist that I did. And this is before I started to do preceptor work again. And I just want to have a few videos that would help a person be able to do the individual meditation and the group meditation connecting directly to the source. There isn't any transmission given by me or through me or through a preceptor or something. It's just that the time is there. It's like if you, it'll say, please be in meditation. And then as you go through it, it'll be silent for 30 minutes for the individual sitting and an hour for the group meditation. But there's no transmission in a sense in the video. And there never is, but that's, you know, that's a, a different subject. But there isn't a sitting connected to the, the video. There wasn't a sitting given when that, the video was being made. It's just there to help people time out their meditations. They turn on the video, it says, please begin meditation. They meditate and then the video will say that's all and the med meditation's over. But you're connecting directly to the source. So it's similar to what you're doing here in the, um, in the, in the gatherings that are happening, this gathering, uh, this upcoming gathering and future gatherings, except there's always a group meditation that's being given that's coming through me in the sitting. So it's a little bit different. But you can use these videos in this playlist to time out your meditation, to know when to start and, and, when, and to know when, you're, uh, when the meditation's over. And there's also explanations in these playlists that'll help you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it and, and the process that's happening. So again, if you're going to use the videos on this playlist, it's only to uh, tell you when to start and tell you when to stop the meditation. But the problem is right now, there are commercials running on this channel, the Gratefulness Meditation channel, which I soon hope to be monetized. And then uh, these are commercials that I'm not running myself. This this isn't a monetized channel. I'm not receiving benefit from the commercials. YouTube's doing this on their own. It's unfortunate because many of these videos on these playlists are sittings and they're supposed to be silent. And people, you know, are watching, having the video be pl it's playing while they're meditating and a commercial comes on and it pulls them out of meditation and I'm hoping that when I get the channel monetized I can turn off all the commercials and YouTube won't run their own I don't know if that's the case but I'm hoping that's the case right uh, but anyways you can do this video here as a way of timing it but a better way to time it at the current state is just to you know set your timer for an hour or 45 minutes or whatever it is or just meditate and feel it and just, you know, end up reading the meditation. And when the final transmission is given, you'll kind of just know. Like you'll feel some transmission in the beginning, maybe. You'll feel some cleaning. And then you'll feel some transmission at the end. And the more that you do it, the better it will be, right? The more that it will, um, you know, the easier it will be to meditate. And, and the more you'll be able to experience the meditation. And you'll be able to feel things on a deeper level and understand the meditation better and better as you, you know, as you do this over, you know, years eventually, right? I've been doing this for 30 years. In ending, I just want to say it's as simple as this. You can just, you know, in the morning sometime, you sit meditation. You have the idea that you're meditating with the group, even though people have already meditated before you or are meditating. They're already meditating when you start or they might be meditating after you, depending on time zones and things. We're not, we're not all meditating at the same time because that's not important. And so you just meditate when, when it's convenient for you. Uh, and, you know, the morning of these first three days, starting February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, or whatever it is, whatever gathering it is, future gatherings and things. And you just have the idea, supposition of divine light in the heart, 
with an, an idea that hopefully you'll be able to feel this energy, divine energy, God's love through the transmission process. And you just have these light thoughts. And when you have, you know, intruding thoughts, thoughts that are not part of the meditation, you just don't attend to them. You do your best. You know, it's a process, right? You know, once in a while you start thinking about something and you start dwelling on it and you realize, oh, I'm not meditating. And then you just go back to the idea of the divine light in your heart. Again, the idea isn't to be thoughtless. You might have meditations where you can be thoughtless. And after years of doing this, I can just sit there and meditate and have no thoughts. But that's not the goal of the system, right? It's just eventually you're going to discipline your mind. Your mind is going to become more disciplined, not by force, but just by learning this process. You're getting into the flow. You're feeling the flow of this energy, right? And so you just have to, you know, sit in a comfortable pose, relaxed pose. And again, you can set an alarm if you want. I mean, that's, you know, if you get into a deep state of, medita deep state of meditation and the alarm goes off, it kind of sucks. Um, so, you know, you just got to, you know, figure out what's best for you. But again, you don't need any instruction other than what I'm telling you here. And you just learn by doing, right? Like some of it's just doing it. Like you just say, well, this doesn't make sense to me. You know, years and years ago, I was at my first spiritual gathering. And there, there was three people, three or four people who were all engineers. They were, you know, people who have a uh, an engineering perspective. They had, you know, degrees in engineering, you know, scientific degrees and mechanical degrees. And they were talking about the cleaning process. And, you know, that's a more active process where you do your nighttime cleaning and you have the idea of divine light coming in to your heart as smoke, as the grossness, spiritual uh, impressions from the day's impressions are going off your back in the form of smoke and vapors. And it wasn't very mechanical. They had a hard time wrapping their minds around how to do this process. These were guys who were doing the meditation for a number of years, and eventually they just, you know, surrendered to it and and did it the way it was told to do, and they they figured it out. They got it right, but initially they didn't. And so you learn by doing, right? It's not something where you're, you're certainly not going to start off as an expert, but everybody knows how to meditate. It's something that people do. In fact, you've meditated in your life and, and you haven't known it. And so it's just the matter of the object of meditation and the enhancement of the cleaning and the transmission that helps people connect to God. You're meditating on God and God's love, and there's a process of, you know, divine energy that's being given to help enhance this, you know, God's inside of you. There's divinity within you, and you're just finding it. You're just relaxing. You're, you're dropping away from your, your mental noise. You're dropping away from the chaos of your life, you're dropping away from all the stressors and things that keep you distracted and keep you from feeling the divinity that's within you. And that's what this process helps with. So in terms of this upcoming gathering or future gatherings, this is how you do it. And I'll make follow-up videos about this. Um, you know, some of it, like I said, will be repetitive, but it's good to hear because sometimes you forget about these things. And so hearing the instructions over and over again and, and maybe they make more sense to you after you've tried it, right? You might want to listen to this video like next gathering and after you've experienced one gathering and you're going, oh yeah, now I understand more because you've already tried it, right? Some of the information is hard to absorb because you haven't had the experience of the meditation, right? So these are the instructions. Of course, you can listen to this video again in two days when the, the gathering uh, takes place or the next gathering in April or the following gathering in July. April 30th and July 24th, or in terms of just um, understanding this, this system. These introductory videos all can be listened to over and over again, and the more you do the process, the more you'll understand. But anyways, that's just a simple explanation. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Roboto, definitely important for the apocalypse, and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day, and be grateful.